Okay, so let me let me kind of put it in a metaphorical space for you. If you understand what your ultimate goal is, whatever that is, that should be and you should view that as the as the top of a mountain like Mount Everest, climbing Mount Everest. And so you have to understand that you have to get to a point where you have a base camp and that base camp may be actually getting the job within a particular sphere, field or what have you. That would be your first strategic goal, getting to the base camp. Your next strategic goal would be getting to a particular ridge or what have you. And that's what strategic goals are. The tactical goals is how do you get to and accomplish that next strategic goal? Okay, so now you kind of understand that here is a goal. Here's here's this, you know, ultimate thing that you want to do. And so you now have to, you know, create this st strategic plan of I need to be here and then I need to get to here and I need to get to here, which will then lend me to obtaining my ultimate goal, right? Okay, so moving forward, and let's say, because I think more people are more interested in being successful in their careers, so I'm gonna probably dedicate most of the rest of the time towards the types of work in your career path, because a lot of people wanna work their way up in a particular discipline or a business and or something. And so some of those strategic goals may be obtaining positions. You know, you get your job as an engineer, you get your job as whatever that position is. And so you're doing the basic work. Well, the you know, there are different positions and let's say you wanna become a director. Let's say you wanna become a fellow what, or a, a president, vice president of the company. And so you wanna get into executive leadership. And so you have to start assuming the types of positions that would lend to that. If you want to go down the path of a fellow program in engineering, then you need to maintain a focus on the technical aspects of your career and the things that that engineering company does. That way, you know, as you, you know, get your software, if maybe you start off with software engineering or systems engineering, hardware engineering, network engineering, whatever. You have to start broadening your scope beyond just that particular discipline. Now, there are lots of people that don't want to go down that path of becoming a fellow in broadening themselves. They want to be a subject matter expert because they just love networking. They just love software. They love this particular thing that they're doing. So then maybe your goal is to become a subject matter expert. So you still have to start looking at the different positions that lead to that. Some of those things can be a technical lead. Um, if you wanna go down executive management, executive leadership, then you need to become a functional supervisor. And that's where you manage people. You wanna become a section head. You wanna do engineering lead. You want to um, get into program management. You want to become an architectural lead and or into work proposals, those types of positions that give you a, a breadth of experience and understanding and skills to help you lead yourself towards that fellowship or that executive position. So what are the steps or short term goals you need to set to reach your midterm goals to help you get to that ultimate goal? Some of it may be education, additional education, training for core competencies. There are usually in an engineering field or within any type of uh, career path, there are typical core competencies that people need to understand. So you may need technical training. You may not have to go back to academia. You may wanna actually go and take some, some very specific courses from a technical school or from a college of, of taking additional courses that you did not get within your degree. You may need technical certifications. So like I said, if you wanna become a, you know, a, a certified network engineer for Cisco, a, a CCNE, then you need to get some certifications, a CCNA, a CCNP, and then get to your CCNE. So there are technical certifications that you want to get to so that you can become an architectural guru in networking or whatever it is. There could also be 
um, education. And I, I, I bring this up because I, I've had people work for me that did not have a bachelor's degree, but they had certifications and they were very good technically because I was in systems engineering. And because they were really good technically at doing networking or hardware, you know, engineering or what have you, or integration, systems administration, that type of stuff, that these folks, the thing that they needed was actually to get a bachelor's degree. And so that was a big strategic goal so that they can continue moving up within the company or within the discipline as a whole so that they could jump and leap into you know, a different company or what have you. If you want to get into management, you have to start learning and becoming more involved with processes. You have to start embracing the processes. You have to start seeking more responsibilities as well. You may want to become, again, like I said, a project lead, team lead, area lead, technical lead, functional lead, those types of things, because management wants to see leadership. On the technical side, you know, you may end up obtaining leadership, but that's only because you become the real guru, the guy that's m making things happen and making things work. They bring you in and they use you as a technical type of lead. When you get into and you want to get down this path of executive leadership, one of the things that you have not gotten in school is really good management slash and or really leadership. What is the difference? I'm going to take a, a you know, a, a divergent here, go on a tangent. What is the difference between a manager and a leader? Well, technically, everybody's a manager. If you are driving on the road, if you happen to have to drive to work, then you have to manage the entire commute from getting to point A to point B, you have to make decisions if you have to reroute because of traffic or what have you, or, you know, the negotiating the lights and, and, you know, dealing with other drivers, that is the management process because you are basically doing what you need to do to get the job done, to get to work. Managers get things done right. A leader is a person that recognizes when something is really wrong, they step up and they do the right thing. A manager follows the, the processes, he follows the book, and he says, hey, you know, um, let's, let's see if we can improve the processes. And they work within the process improvement process, whether that be, you know, Fagan inspections or what have you to identify how they can improve efficiencies and so forth. That's what managers do. Leaders actually challenge paradigms. Leaders actually challenge the status quo. They challenge the norm. And um, so getting back onto track and helping you kind of differentiate between leadership and management, if you want to get into executive leadership, then you need to start reading books and you need to start trying to seek educational opportunities in leading. Some schools actually do provide the um, some courses. There is really no good qualified, I should say, um, educational course, but other than that of a career. I, you know, I will, I will stand to tell you that I believe that when I look, and I've got a huge bias on this, when I look at real leadership, I find that the military and more specifically the Marine Corps really makes people, you know, think and have to do the right thing. You're constantly being challenged and you're constantly having to make decisions that really affect lives. And there's probably no greater decisions that you can make than when it comes down to saving lives and or to save a life. Um, and then sometimes there's no greater decision that you have to take in taking lives to save lives because in fighting war, you know, it's, it's not about, you know, feeding people. It's, it's about killing people, right? So anyway, if you understand what the steps are that you need to obtain these, <clears throat> these short-term or strategic goals, then you can start understanding what your tactical goals are. And some of those things, again, putting them into a tactical space 
would be actually developing in so a tactical goal my friends is something that you do in a year or a couple of months or a couple of weeks or what have you some of those things may be literally developing core competency skills where do you fall in your current if you're a labor grade or what have you where do you fall in your position and are you are you pushing yourself in core competencies to the next level what is it you need to know or understand whether that be hardware networking systems software security administration or even um, some of the mundane tasks and i don't know what those things might be within your particular field but you should have a good grasp on those things if it's in education it's literally classes it's getting good grades and those types of things and classes take a few months to do. So they're short term. They're something that you can literally knock off and accomplish in a year. And so you should have yearly goals that you establish that are developing both educational core competency skills and those types of things that help you in your career path. Now, going back to marriage real quick, there is really nothing that you can really obtain other than, you know, actually watching, going to marriage counseling, even if you don't need it, learning and understanding how to work together and how to make the politics of marriage work. Because if you're, I'm telling you, Aristotle says there's politics in everything in life. There is politics in marriage.